a story that came out September 26, 2018 on CNN. You know, while everybody got their eyes on the opioid plague, meth is now making a strong comeback. And some of you might have remembered back in the day when people used to have meth labs in their homes and the homes would explode. And um, a lot of addicts are now cooking their own meth. And they have like a little meth lab set up in their vehicles. This is also a, a thing that's more and more common. I did a few videos on that, by the way. Now, meth is a growing problem across America. Now, what they usually do, they'll take like uh, cold medicine with chemicals and they'll cook this up. And now, some places they don't even bother with doing their own cooking of meth because it's much cheaper to get it from Mexico. Plus, the quality from what I'm reading, it's a much purer uh, quality of meth than they could ever make in their own lab here in the U.S. So while much of the America is focused on combating the devastating impacts of the opioid addiction, some states like Oklahoma are struggling to fight a new battle against an old foe, the role of Mexican super labs. Richard Salter, has been with the Drug Enforcement Administration for 27 years, most recently as a special agent in charge of the state of Oklahoma. He said the meth problem in Oklahoma is getting worse and points to Mexico cartels, in particular, the power of Sen Sinola, Sinola cartel, as the reason, as it become more difficult and dangerous to produce meth in the United States, cartels recognize an opportunity to fill the void. They came in with much purer and much cheaper meth and just flooded this region of the country, Salter said. And I guess they're making meth in the containers. Salter said in 2012, the DEA was buying meth undercover off the streets for $1,100 an ounce. Today, his agents are regularly getting ounces for just $250 to $450. That's as cheap as I've ever seen methamphetamines my entire career, he said. The reason for the drop in prices is scale of production that the Mexican cartels have achieved, whereas shake and bake labs could turn out lots of small batches, so-called super labs, and Mexico produce hundreds of pounds daily. Salter said most of the meth his agent sees first come across the U.S.-Mexico border in California or Arizona both making its way through the interstate highway system and temporary stash houses on its way to Oklahoma. And you can see meth seizures are increasing from 2010 all the way to 2018. Along the border, officials with U.S. Customs and Border Protection also report a steep increase in the amount of meth they are seizing. Okay, so they're saying, you know, from the field office, it's a 50% increase in the amount of meth seized compared to this time last year. The other hard narcotic, like cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl, we see them. They're prevalent at our border crossing, but nowhere near the quantity that we see of meth. Oh, well, it's cheap. 
on the streets of Oklahoma, this influx of cheap and powerful meth has had deadly consequences. The number of lethal meth overdoses in the state has more than doubled in recent years, rising from 140 in 2012 to 335 in 2016. In 2017, there were 327 meth overdose deaths, but that tally is incomplete. And actually the number is likely higher according to Mark Woodward, spokesman with the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics. And you can see the increase in meth overdoses in Oklahoma. There's so much attention, not just in Oklahoma, but nationwide on the opioid plague, said Woodward but our single most deadly individual drug is methamphetamines. Perhaps no city has been hit harder by the latest meth epidemic than Tulsa. Hmm, isn't that where Black Wall Street was? It sure was. In just the first six months of 2018, um, the division has already suppressed the amount of meth they seized in all of 2017 by 30 pounds. He can't explain why the problem is more severe here than any other parts of the state, but he doesn't think incarceration is the solution. Wow, it's amazing how they don't believe people with drug problems should be incarcerated. They sure felt that way during the crack epidemic, didn't they? Okay. Okay, Walmers Heiser said his department is trying to use more front end diversion tactic to help addicts get treatment without getting the criminal justice system involved, while also aggressively pursuing the cartels and other large scale distributors. While the amount of meth his officers has seized has risen, he said his department is on track to reduce the number of arrests by 40% this year. So they're fighting to reduce the number of drug arrests, ladies and gentlemen. In the meantime, Black guys are still getting nabbed for marijuana. I think we're definitely targeting the right folks that are taking advantage of our city and citizens, but the addiction is strong and it's difficult. Yeah, it is. Uh, Lindsay Matiers' struggle with anxiety and depression led her to self-medicate as a teenager. At 14, her boyfriend at the time introduced her to meth. I immediately liked it, uh, McAteer said. It gave me a false sense of identity and a false sense of accomplishment. It was the beginning of a 20 year struggle with the drug that nearly ended with a life sentence. After using meth for several years, she said she stopped for a brief period, but after that, after she was laid off from work, she had her health Wow. Well, so, you know, she's just talking about her experience with meth. So um, mass incarceration is also an issue in Oklahoma, particularly among women. I, let me let me tell you today, and you can look this up. I've done videos on it. More white women go to prison in America than any other woman. I'm just putting that out there because it's the truth particularly among women. And lengthy sentences for drug offenses are a major contributing factor, according to analysis by Reveal from the Center for Investigative Reporting. The state has the, national, uh, the nation's highest female incarceration rate with 149 out of every 
100,000 women locked up, more than double the national average. And that is the truth. The Midwest is really hit the hardest as far as female um, incarceration is concerned. It's more in the Midwest. Okay, so even for those women like McAteer, who face time in prison, there are sometimes alternatives to life behind bars. Women in Recovery, or WIR, is an intensive program for women who are looking at lengthy sentences for drug offenses in Tulsa County. With the door of a prison cell that only other options that was open to her, McAteer entered WIR in August 2014. Okay, so they're saying that, you know, they have people participating and at least 60% of the women have seen their addictions lead them to meth that are incarcerated. Early on, because it's a stimulant, they feel wonderful. It makes them um, productive and motivated said Roxanne Hentler, Hentler um, clinical director for WIR, but ultimately they can't take care of their children and they lose everything they have. Okay, so they're saying most of the women in the program have been battling addiction for 13 to 15 years, which takes a huge toll on their health and wellness and that of their family. Many have also experienced traumatic events from childhood abuse to sexual assault and domestic violence. Using a range of treatment, training, and education, the program gives women who would be spending time behind bars a second chance at a productive and fulfilling life. McAteer graduated from WIR in 2016 and has now been an active recovery for more than four years. Today, she works as a housing compliance specialist for the Mental Health Association, Oklahoma. Since women in recovery began in 20. 2009, 390 women have graduated with 6.7% of graduates relapsing or falling back into criminal activity. I can say that recovery is definitely possible, and I can say that treatment is the answer versus punishment, McAteer says. It's not foolproof. I can say that everyone is able to use this program the way it's designed to work, but the vast majority of us do. Yeah, well, I don't think those things get offered for people that get arrested for a few ounces of marijuana. You know, perhaps they tweak it just for opioid and meth users and fentanyl, you know, the other drugs. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. So while everybody is paying close attention to opioids in this country, meth is exploding all over the place. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I will see you on the next video. Peace, family.